Great. So um, we, we, we were actually talking about, you know, Article 12, and I told you the meaning of a state is quite wide, you know. Uh, I told you, like, uh, earlier, like, a state means what a country, a state means Indi Indian states, like we were talking about earlier, uh, yesterday we, we discussed actually, and uh, we were also talking about how Indian states are different from, you know, United States or America. And then I told you like how Americans are having two constitution, the history behind it, uh, like, you know, USP guys, you know, they do have, they're holding uh, two citizenship. And in India, if, if we'll talk about Indians having one constitution and, uh, you know, one citizenship. So as, as you told me, like, uh, like India is having holding together concept and US is having what? um coming together concept i told you the history behind it you know like states they decided to come together and they do have agreements so in the united states if, you know uh, if any state uh, they, they want they want you know like that a state should become a free nation it's possible because they do have you know agreement but here i told you a bigger state hold it you know a small states on uh, just a second on uh, small states and that's why it's not possible in india you know no state can declare like they want to be a free nation it's not possible so this was the history behind it that's why holding together and coming together concept that were discussed and i tell you the three lists like how parts are discussed and all now when uh, so like the, you know a state doesn't mean you know only country and states that do have in our country a state also means what uh the local authority is uh, okay including you know uh, uh uh all the institutions which are under control of the indian government so i gave you the example of university government university and all so even that can be termed as a state so it's a very wide concept uh, and uh, it may take, you know, one article can take one day to elaborate. But here we are not going in detail because we need to cover our, you know, case law as well. Now come to the next one, Article 13. So if I'm talking about the Article 13, uh, which is quite important once again. So when I'm talking about this Article okay, 13, so here law inconsistent with or in derogation of the fundamental rights okay so in case any law okay you know uh it, it may be any ordinance or order by law or the rule regulation notification or you can say custom or you know uses having in territory of india uh the force of law if it is actually against any any article of the constitution it will be void remember okay void means what having no effect uh, we can't implement it remember it okay so no one can make this sort of law which is against what in a constitution in an, uh, you know whatever the uh, articles we do have so uh, it won't be applicable it will be void Okay, it will remain void. Okay, and I'll come to the next one. Now we are going to talk about Article 14 to 18. Remember, Article 14 to 18. Uh, all the participants, please do remember in case if you will get any kind of disconnection, you need to click on the same link so that you can join, you know, again that session. So uh, we are going to finish our session at nine. So before that, if you'll have any kind of disconnection, please click on the same link and you will be here once again. Okay, now we are going to talk about Article 14 first. Okay, so when I'm talking about Article 14, so what is that? Equality before law. So when I'm talking about the equality before law, that means what the state shall not deny to any person equality before law or the equal protection of the law here we, we, we are talking about the two things remember the one thing is <laughs> any person you know any person it, it can be a prime minister it, it can be a president it can be you know a simple common person or rixapula all are equal before law remember it and all are having what equal protection of the law 
okay got it now prohibition uh, next one is prohibition of discrimination that is actually article 15 which is again quite important okay uh, all these uh, when i'm talking about fundamental rights article 12 to article 35 is quite important okay and this if, if i'll talk about article 14 it can take you know three to four days uh, of discussion but we, we, we are not going to you know elaborate that much okay in case if you want to learn uh, you can visit on website you can figure it out more and more but here we will focus towards our case law so that's why we are finishing you know a little bit faster now come to the for article 15 and article 15 is prohibition of discrimination on ground of religion race caste, sex or place of birth okay remember so the state shall not discriminate you know against any citizen on the ground of these uh, these factors that i told you like religion race caste sex it's not possible okay and no citizen shall on ground only of the religion uh, race caste or no, all these uh be subject to any uh, disability or liability or restriction or condition Okay, with regards to access of shop, maybe public restaurant, hotel, and places of public, you know, uh, uh, places or um, maybe any, anything which is actually uh, common for all. And the use of maybe well, tanks, bathing guards, you know, earlier people used to do, as, especially in rural areas, maybe road places or public restaurant, all this is not possible. Okay, so anyone having any doubt related to Article 14 or 15? Anyone who would like to ask a question, please feel free to ask. No, sir, it's clear. Okay, great. So uh, all the participants, please do remember in case if you have any kind of doubt, don't hesitate. Okay, because it's the starting and you can ask. I'm, all, I'm always going to cooperate so that you can gain, you know, maximum knowledge from this participation. My intention is that you should learn more and more. Only things that you need to ask question if you're not able to understand. Okay, great. Now, Article 16. So when I'm talking about, article, again, this article, you know, if, if you talk about the Article 15, its explanation is quite wide. Okay. So now come to the Article 16, and uh, what is that Article 16? Equality, equality of opportunity in the matter of public employment. Okay, so when I'm talking about, you know, public employment, actually it is, it should be for all. So there shall be equality of opportunity for all the citizens. Okay, can, can anyone tell me, I told you yesterday, about uh, one article where you know citizen or citizenship details are given anyone who remember it who remembers you know where it is given so citizenship is actually given in part two of indian constitution if you want to write down for your knowledge Okay, it is given in part two, which contains article five to eleven. So, if you want to know what are the terms and conditions given, you know, are uh, related to citizenship. Okay, why Tibetan people are not given citizenship? Why they can't become, you know, citizen of India? Okay, but a Pakistan guy can become citizen of India. Like Adnan Sami is the best example okay but why not tibetan the reason behind it like india is supporting you know tibetan guys it, once they, they'll give you know citizenship so what will happen like they, they'll become the citizen of india then they, they won't you know raise this issue uh, at, at international level so it's a kind of an indirect support you can say but we are giving them so much of facilities in india okay so they they consider india as their own home okay so this is what so if you want to know more about citizenship i'll request you to go in part two 
uh, Indian Constitution, which is related to citizenship, and uh, Article 5 to Article 11 is related to it. Now, so uh, we were on, now come back to uh, Article 16. So all the participants, it's, it's related to what? There shall be equality of opportunity for all the citizens in matter relating to employment and appointment to any office under the state. So if you if you're actually going to you know apply for the job, especially under public employment, so you'll have equal opportunity. No citizen shall on the ground only because of race, religion, and all these you know. Uh, we can't actually uh, we can't say like they are not eligible okay for the post okay great so this is what actually related to article 16 which uh, which is actually quite having quite you know details if you are going to talk about uh, about the case laws if you are going to study its explanation is quite wider okay fine now come to so again it's as a uh, you know it, it it can take maybe two three days to explain but it's okay you, uh, here i'm going just uh, I'm, I'm going to explain only you the gist now come to the uh, 17 article 17 evaluation of untouchability okay so untouchability is abolished and its practice in any form is forbidden remember in india Okay, enforcement of any disability uh, arising out of, you know, untouchability shall be an offense punishable in accordance with the law. So if you're going to practice, you know, uh, uh, directly or indirectly is a punishable offense. Okay. Abolition. Now, the next one is abolition of title. What does it mean? You know, uh, 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 India was the colony of Britishers, you, you know that. Okay, so they used to give different titles. Now we are a sovereign nation. Okay, we are independent nation. So we cannot accept any title uh, given by, you know, any other country. It's not possible. So no title, uh, you know, or not being a military or academic distinction shall be conferred by the state. So no citizen of India shall, you know, accept any title from any foreign state. Remember, we can't accept any title. You know, uh, China cannot decide who will be the uh, army general in India. Okay, China cannot give this title to Indian, uh, you know, officers. So China can't say, you know, you will be the minister of that department. Or maybe Russia cannot say. Uh, you know, you will be that minister in India. It's not possible because we, we, we can't accept, you know, these titles from outside because we are a sovereign nation. We do have our own constitution. We do have our own laws. Okay. So no other country. But earlier we were the colony of Britishers. So that's why, you know, they used to, Britishers used to give us title. Anyone is having any doubt related to Article 14, 15, 16, and 17, 18? Anyone have in doubt? Please feel free to ask. I'll, I'll repeat that. Don't hesitate. No doubt. Sir, sir can yeah. you repeat Article 14? 14. Okay, so all are equal before law. You know, Article, when I'm talking about uh, Article 14, so it has two important points. One is all are equal before law, and all will get what? Equal protection of law. So if someone is very poor, it doesn't mean court will deny justice. Okay, now, in front of court, even a prime minister, president, maybe chief minister, maybe any government employee, everyone, everyone, including a Riksa Pula person, okay, uh, a labor, everyone is equal and everyone will get equal opportunity to get protection of law. So, you know, uh, that's why uh, equality before law, Okay, when I'm talking about Article 14, it is equality before law. So all will get equal protection and all are equal before the law. That is Article 14. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, most welcome, most welcome. Any other, any other participant having doubt, please, please tell me, I'll repeat it. <clears throat> mm. 
No? No, sir. Okay, great. And so, right to freedom. When I'm talking about right to freedom, so from Article 19 to Article 22 is related to, you know, our right to freedom. Okay, come to Article 19 first. So when I'm talking about Article 19, protection of certain rights regarding freedom of speech. So here, remember, like, you know, this first clause, especially uh, what it says, it says, uh, all citizens shall have the right. What sort of right? Okay. It is related to freedom of speech and expression. Okay. It, it talks about to assemble peacefully and without arms so that you can protest okay uh, to form association or unions or cooperative societies okay yeah you can form it you're independent okay um uh, that didn't used to happen you know uh, earlier when uh, uh if you if you have gone through you know in your, your academic books uh, whether if you will talk about russian revolution chapters or french revolution chapters okay so it was difficult to form you know a trade union and all this why because you know um, wherever we do have you know monarch wherever we do have you know a communist they won't give you you know that much freedom so that's why here we do have you know freedom to form association or maybe union maybe cooperative societies okay the next one is to move freely throughout the territory of India. Uh, maybe uh, someone from South India would like to come and settle in North. It is possible because, you know, our uh, constitution has given, you know, this right. So to reside and settle in any part of the territory of India. So the, these are the important point. And not only that, to practice any profession, okay, you can earlier what used to happen generally uh, you know ancestral uh, or maybe you can you know the, the people used to have hierarchy or uh, hierarchy related to you know generation to generation uh, if i'm talking about the profession and all okay but now now it's not possible you know as we do have liberty and no one can deny this right so to practice any profession to carry on you know occupation or trade and business we do have article 19 which gives us you know freedom but remember whenever i'm talking about any kind of freedom it is having what uh certain restrictions okay limitations so yesterday i told you about that okay uh it's not absolute i uh, i discussed about the emergency okay the two types of emergency okay financial and whenever we do have war with any other country so at that time what happens with the fundamental rights I told you and not only that remember the foreign foreign country peoples again when i'm talking about the fundamental rights so if someone is from abroad who is not the citizen of you know india so they do have you know us uh, uh limited rights once again not uh, but even indians are not having absolute right got it so all these things we we discussed yesterday okay so and we do have more in it but we have taken you know is uh, in the small points now come to the article 21 which is the biggest one once again okay which includes so many things which can take uh, you know uh, days to discuss actually okay so but in short we'll do quickly important points from article 21 so if we'll talk about the article 21 protection of life and personal liberty that is article 21 and remember no one can commit suicide why because the indian constitution doesn't give permission to do that okay so no one can commit suicide remember okay great so uh, that that's uh, and if we'll talk about article uh, you know uh, so you're having you know a uh, protection of life so protection of life and personal liberty okay uh, you, uh, you can talk about clean water okay clean environment uh, under article 21 you you can talk about privacy okay uh, under article 21 and so many other important points are given there 
Now, if we'll talk about Article 21A, earlier actually it was not a fundamental right, but later what happened, that uh, article was taken here, okay, <clears throat> under Article 21. Uh, so that's why, you know, um, children up to 14 years of age in government school, they are not charged any kind of amount, free and compulsory education. Okay. Now, when I'm talking about Article 21, so protection against arrest and detention in certain cases, which are quite important. Okay, three three important points are there. Okay, so what was that? Um, so, uh, so if if you talk about the first one, no person who is arrested shall be you know denied in the custody without being informed. So police. That, that you know the, uh, those who are going to arrest them they should inform you know why that person is in custody okay why that person is going to be taken in custody so that's very important okay uh, just a second I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry Okay, great. So, okay, uh, and on what ground, what, uh, what actually that person did, so th 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 that is very important, like, you know, police should inform and then that person should be arrested. Okay, now second, second important point related to Article 19, uh, you, you can say clause. Okay, the second one is every person who is arrested and detained in custody shall be produced before the nearest magistrate within a period of 24 hours. Got it? That is also important. That person should be taken to the nearest magistrate within 24 hours. Okay. Of such arrest, excluding the time necessary for the journey from the place of arrest to the court. So that, that you need to uh remember okay one more thing is given okay so nothing in clause one and two whatever we have learned so far to any person who for the time being is enemy or aligned remember if someone is from you know uh so for example in in india if someone is from pakistan or maybe china so at that time uh, I, I told you, like everyone is not having, you know, uh, fundamental rights, absolute fundamental rights. And even Indians are not having absolute fundamental rights, but certain rights are given to even, uh, you know, those who are not the citizen. But when I'm talking about the enemies, you know, uh, when I'm talking about the line, uh, so if they are arrested, so we can't say, you know, Article 19, this, this right is given whatever is written in Clause 1 and 2 of Article 19. They don't have, you know, these, these rights. Okay. <clears throat> to any person who is arrested or detained under any law providing for, you know, preventive detention. So at that time also, it's, it's not that much important. So remember, it's, it's not applicable to the foreign, uh, foreign uh enemy or maybe enemy align okay so these are important point now the fourth clause is no law providing for preventive detention shall authorize the detention of a person for a longer period than three months in case if it is required but again you know uh there should be advisory board consisting of the person who are or have been or qualified to be appointed as just a high court has to be reported been expiration of the said person of the three months that is in its opinion sufficient cause for such dissension so in case you know in case the who the person who was arrested and you know uh, the government employee or maybe police is not going to produce you know valid reason so it will become a problem for them also okay so there there are certain case of law the, where you 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 can uh, where you can figure out you know the uh, judgments okay given but remember article 19 uh, is, uh the first and second point are quite important and the fourth point are a special point okay and third is actually not uh, we, we, we are not actually giving this right to the anime line okay any anyone is having any doubt please feel free to ask
No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Great. So, uh, participant, uh, uh, I just want you to revise all these things, okay, after today's session, because from tomorrow I'm going to tell you about other stuff that happens in moot code. Okay, because this is the same way you are going to do in your law colleges that we actually, you know, we actually bringing uh, it uh, for the students. It's not a mock code. Generally, you know, at a school level, we uh, generally, uh, uh, the organizer, they conduct mock uh, mock code. Okay, but we are conducting moot code, which is actually for the law students. So from tomorrow, I, I'll tell you, okay, what exactly you'll have to do. Uh, okay, now let me check the next one. And it is now come to the article 23 to the article 24. Okay. <clears throat> so again, I would like to remind you in case, in case if, uh, if you'll get, you know, any kind of disconnection before nine, please feel free to con uh, connect once again by using the same link. Okay, now right against exploitation and it is, you know, it is article 23, 24 is, you know, uh, very important. What is given there? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, let me share the screen once again. So anyone who can tell me what is human trafficking? Uh, people are uh, mostly children, they are picked up without their consent and they are made to do work that is not exactly legal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anybody else? It's only, you know, uh, children or maybe anybody else? Sometimes adults too. Yeah, adults also. Maybe female can be taken for the adultery, you know, purpose. So, yeah. Okay, so it depends. Great. Excellent. So prohibition of traffic in human beings on forced, you know, forced level is actually not, uh, not allowed. So if, if I'll talk to you all these in detail, so tra uh, traffic in human beings and beggar and other similar form of forced labor are prohibited in India, remember. Okay. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, and, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's an offense, you know, uh, punishable offense, I can say. Um, okay, and um, what I can say here, um, great, so this, this is quite important. Now come to the next one, article 24. So freedom of, you know, consign uh, freedom, uh, sorry, free profession. So what does it mean? actually article 14 so no, no, not 14 i'm talking about now uh 24 okay so it's 24 so prohibition of employment of children in factories okay so what what is the minimum age when you know children can start working in a factory so 14 14 okay and uh, what's the difference between you know the person who is 14 years of age and working in a factory and the person who is 18 years of age and working in a factory is there any difference or both are equal because in india generally we consider you know the person who are 18 years of age are adult they are having voting rights you know So the nature of the work that you know that 14 year old child will get is different from the nature of the work that 18 years of a person is doing remember you know so their their duties their tasks that person can do you know it is clearly mentioned in labor law okay what sort of work that 14 year child can do and what he or she cannot do which you know uh which can be done by one adult person so that's the main difference okay and even their attendance register you know mustard is different mustard means what attendance register is different uh, uh, you you can't you know add with uh, the same uh, same mustard so it should be maintained separately 
Okay, now come to the next one. Um, next one is just a skim. Article 25 to 28 is related to right to religious freedom. Okay. So I'm, I'm talking. So 25, okay, 25 freedom of consensus on free profession practice and propagate of religion so you can talk about your religion you can spread it okay and um, you can you can perform your uh, freely you can perform your uh, you know religious uh, uh, activities on you can celebrate your culture religion okay all these things are given here and providing you know for social welfare and reform or throwing you know or open or uh, anyone from any religion in india can practice it okay so there is no restriction uh, related to religion okay now uh, anyone can follow any religion okay it's, it's not it's not like you know uh, you have to follow only one religion it's to, it, it, and it is also possible like you can be, become atheist okay in india uh, there's no restriction so now uh, if we'll talk about the 26 so it says what freedom to manage your religious affairs okay so establish and maintain your institution of religious and charitable purpose manage your own affairs of matter in religion okay uh, to administer such property in accordance with the law and 27 is related to freedom as to payment of taxes okay for the promotion of any particular religion so no person shall be compelled to pay any tax okay that used to happen in past you know if you are not following that a particular religion so you were supposed to pay tax now it's not possible okay whatever religion you are following no need to pay tax because you are following any other religion okay so now if, if we'll talk about the 28 freedom as to attendance at religious instruction or religious worship in certain educational institution so no religious instruction shall be provided in any educational institution only maintained out of the state fund if it is actually managed by a state fund you can't give you know instructions and third one is also important no person attending any educational institution recognized by the state or receiving aid fund okay shall be acquired to take the part of any religious instruction that may be important in such institution or to attend any religious worship that may be conducted in such institution or in any premises attached there to unless such person or if such person is a minor his guardian has given his consent there too okay so no one can compel that you have to follow this and that now come to the cultural and educational right okay 29 and 30 is related to that so protection against interest of minorities okay this is 29 1 and freedom to get admission in educational institution okay that is article 29 clause 2 these two are again important okay so no citizen shall be denied admission into any educational institution maintained by a state so you can't say you know uh, because you are following this religion or because you are from this and that background so you won't get the admission no it's not possible okay now uh when i'm talking about okay great so on religion or language shall have the right to establish an administrative educational institution as per their choice remember it okay the state shall not in granting aid to educational institution discriminate against any educational institution on the ground that it is under management of minority okay so it's not possible now right to constitutional remedy is quite important okay article now we'll talk about article 32 but before that i would like to tell you article 31 compulsory acquisition of property okay um so 
it is actually we don't have now so that's why uh, it, it is not taken here and that's why we are directly moving to 32 okay so when I'm talking about the article 32 was quite important and it is it is the heart of Indian Constitution you can see it okay so it provides that a citizen can approach directly to the Supreme Court of India due to the proper so if anyone is going to violate your fundamental right remember you can directly go to the Supreme Court generally what do you have to do first you have to go to this district level court and then you are going to the high court and then you have to go to the Supreme Court but in case anyone who is going to violate your fundamental rights, you can directly go to the Supreme Court under Article 32. If you cannot go, then ask any of your friends, you know, that, that, that person can go there. <laughs> okay, critical evolution. So no right outside the Constitution. Okay. So, you know, you're having fundamental right and constitutional rest all are constitutional right. Too many limitations. Okay. Uh, we can't say too many limitations, but yeah, <laughs> there are certain. Okay. So, preventive detention and fundamental rights we have studied. Okay. Before arrest, what should happen? Okay. And after, even after arrest, what rights you do have? At the time of emergency, we have discussed there are two types of emergency, financial and war. Okay, that what happens? Absence of economic right. Okay, uh, because you know, Article 31 is, you know, no, no more implemented. Uh, vague and complex language, supremacy of parliament over fundamental rights. Whether it is or not, okay, that... Uh, you can figure it out whether it, uh, they are supreme or not. So we can't say actually they are supreme because, you know, uh, you need to fo follow. Uh, everyone has to follow, you know, the constitution. Fine. And a special concessions, you know, given to the minorities. Okay. Importance of human rights are, of course, given. Okay. Foundation of democracy. Check on the arbitrariness. Means no one can, you know, rule actually. No one can have monopoly uh, or no government can have, you know, uh, authoritarianship. Uh, we, 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 are not, uh, we, we are not having, you know, monarch. We, we, we don't have, you know, a communist government. So, so there, there's a check, you know, there is a balance of it. Okay, create proper conditions for the development of men and foundation of rule of law. Rule of law is for all. And the mother of rule of law is what our Indian constitution. So whatever law actually, you know, uh, <clears throat> is made in Indian constitution, uh, sorry, in, in the parliament, it should be actually uh, according to the Indian constitution. Protection of interest. Okay. Uh, okay, great. Great. So... Remember, once you can revise it today and tomorrow we are going to tell you about like how actually you have to start, okay, how to do the research work, all this stuff. I'll give you the second presentation tomorrow and, and uh, if you want to download other stuff which is already uh, given on World Education uh, uh, Events com. That is on website. You need to download that PDF, ROP, and case law is already uploaded there. So please download, go through it. Okay, uh, in case you're not able to understand it, it's, it's absolutely fine for me because you're participating for the first time. So I'm going to explain it. Uh, whatever question, questions you do have, please feel free to ask. Okay. So today we finished, you know, important part which is related to fundamental rights. Okay, and in, in case anything which is, you know, important during session related to your case law, I'll tell you how to do the research at that time. Okay, now anybody else who have any kind of question? No? 
So, just a second, I need to share it. Okay, so you can download, you know, case law, which is given on website, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what exactly you'll have to do. Okay, how to start. Okay. <clears throat> how to prepare your memorial okay and what color you should use okay what is the applicant what is the respondent okay all these things tomorrow I'll tell you and the guidelines so ROP is there okay and uh, ROP is already uploaded on website you can download it a PDF copy and tomorrow I'll, I'm going to discuss about your memorial and what should be the color because you, you are not going to submit you know physically whenever we are conducting it uh, offline especially in school uh, and colleges so at that time you know you need to submit you a hard copy of it but here what you have to do simply you can type it but the first piece you have to use uh, and that should be you know a uh, blue color or red color as per the rule given to you okay maybe you have to change your role maybe uh, after day one because the researchers can become what speaker or a speaker will become researcher so that that will also happen great so all these discussion tomorrow we'll have uh, don't worry wherever you'll have problem uh, i'm gonna help you out so